Good afternoon and greetings from all of us for a happy Ganesh Chaturthi. I am Uday Shetty and you're watching another session of Pharma Best Practices webinar. Today, Frederick will be presenting on augmented reality in pharma manufacturing. We believe that knowledge is more powerful when it is shared. We are pleased that during these tough times of pandemic, we could bring several subject matter experts on this platform, the platform of pharma best practices webinars for the benefit of pharma professionals. Today's session by Frederick is the 91st session since we started this webinar series way back in March 2020. With these 90 sessions, we have reached more than 23,000 professionals from pharma and biopharma industry who have attended our session live. And we have reached another 50 or 60,000 professionals who have watched our recorded sessions. We thank you for your trust and faith in us. This is what keeps us going. As all of you know, information about these webinars is available on our website specifically designed for this purpose, pbpw.in. Recordings of the past webinars. You can read Pharma Best Practices blog written by several SMEs on very interesting and current hot topics. And if you wish, you can join our discussion forums, which is a platform for professionals to discuss technical matters. You can watch recordings of past webinars on our YouTube channel also. The YouTube channel is given in the chat. Let me say a few words about today's webinar, which is on augmented reality in pharma manufacturing. Smooth connectivity between machines and other systems is a precondition for reliable and secure pharmaceutical production. Solutions are available and Frederick will be presenting one of them, the Leon Suite, which enables manufacturers to set standard shape and control quality related processes and optimize the effectiveness of production lines. When consolidated data for the complete manufacturing line is available in one system, and when displayed for further analysis in an OEE dashboard, along with the augmented reality solution, operators can be supported by means of digitally guided workflows that can be shown on any browser compatible device or as AR using Microsoft HoloLens 2. These new technologies increase process efficiency significantly, and Frederick will give more details about this. Talking about Frederick, we're fortunate to have a subject matter expert in this field on ERP, MES, machine level understanding, Pharma 4.0, and what you say. He will be talking about uh, augmented reality, and he works with Cobair uh, Pharma uh, solutions. His presentation will be for about 60 to 75 minutes. So you, Frederick, you have a lot of time. Please take your time in giving all the details and then which will be followed by a brief Q&A session. Please ask your questions at the end of the presentation. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. And with this few words, please welcome Frederick to give his presentation. Over to you, Frederick. Okay, thank you, Uday, for the introduction and very warm welcome from my side. Good afternoon to everyone. Yeah, my name is Frederick Thiele. I'm uh, with Kerber Pharma and I'm the um, product lead within Kerber Pharma for digital products. So today I wanna focus and give you some examples on augmented reality technology. So um, what we are currently doing within the pharma production actually. Um, so before we actually start with the presentation, um, I would like to give you a short overview um, with a video. So now I switch to a short video and afterwards I will introduce some more examples. So this is just an introduction, a general introduction on augmented reality. You see some uh, elements of augmented reality and how we use it on specific machines. And uh, later on, I will show you some more details and um, how we use it in reality. So I switch to the video and I also have to switch the sound that hope 
talk about them clearly. And um, let's go. Do you see the change in pharmaceutical production? Complexity is growing with an ever increasing demand to deliver vital drugs to the world. Are you relying on paper documents? Use autonomous systems that slow down operations, increase deviations and downtimes. The Lion Suite by Kerba is an extensive solution, transforming your production facility, providing connection, optimization of operation and control for an integrated, modern, compliance-driven manufacturing process without paper. From small to global pharma, Lion is unlocking unused potential, providing valuable insights through data, making your production more intelligent and reliable. We believe standardization is key to increasing efficiency and effectively making use of your data so you can deliver faster. Lion harmonizes and connects Lion equipment for your real-time batch execution. Configure, test, and validate your equipment across all suppliers. Giving you full control over batch executions, Lion centralizes your production on one single machine interface, the Lion dashboard. Alarms can quickly be located and rectified. Generated data can seamlessly be passed on to integrated manufacturing execution systems. All functions are designed to ensure production quality and documentation. Lion supports digital and augmented workflows introducing hands-free guidance for maintenance, training, and regulatory relevant processes. Complex procedures can be simply visualized and critical data effortlessly recorded. Lion documents all the work for you, bringing you up to speed. Creating an optimized workflow is simple. Use Lion to transform your paper-based documents and SOPs into smart, standardized, and structured work steps. Operate hands-free and through voice guidance to execute your qualitative augmented changeover processes. An MES integration ensures secure data transfer and seamless availability for all batch reports. The Lion Suite supports you along the entire production process, so you can execute batches and necessary work steps reliably, collaboratively, and precisely. Reducing downtimes and increasing productivity helps deliver the difference to those who need it the most. Let Lion take control, so you can stay focused. Okay, that was uh, the introduction, the warm up of our today's session. And uh, before I come to, to the details and some more examples about augmented reality, I just want to show you the general Kerber um, Pharma offering here uh, because that shows you also in which areas we're actually using augmented reality. So beside inspection and packaging machines, uh, we're also doing uh, different kinds of software in the pharmaceutical industry, as well as track and trace and the consulting around. And the interesting thing here about augmented re reality is you're gonna see that later in the presentation. Um, that uh, the, the systems for augmented reality are not only linked to the shop floor processes, but also to laboratory processes, also warehousing and so forth. And um, yeah, you're gonna see some more examples uh, on machines which are not part of the Kerber Pharma offering. So why did we start all this year, um, a couple of years back? So one of the key points was um, that we have figured out together with our customers that the lot sizes are uh, smaller and smaller. So um, if you do not produce 
one batch with a hundred thousand or even more um, pieces, then um, you have to do a lot more change over processes. And even if you produce more or less the same product and you do not have to do a format change on your equipment, nevertheless, you need to do a line clearance. And that takes always a lot of time. And uh, that is basically time the machine is not running. So uh, ideally, the machine should always uh, be in running mode. And uh, that was one key driver why we started uh, those initiatives around augmented reality. Another point is um, that, we, that we could see that uh, the operators are not always, but uh, constantly changing. You have... Um, you, you are in the position that you have to train new operators. Um, and um, since you, you're doing basically quite critical processes within your pharmaceutical production, um, it is key that the operators really know what they do. And um, here with augmented reality, um, I want to show you a little bit that especially in terms of training you can use those systems in a very smart way that the operator can train um, the processes without being at the production site or on the shop floor actually and they can familiarize in a very simple and um, yeah visualized way which is much easier than reading just sops on a screen um that is the second point the third point um which is one of our main driver here is all the integration i want to show you later on that integration is not really necessary for augmented reality at least in the first step um so uh, but in the long run paperless production is always key so you try to uh, reduce the amount of paper that you have smooth interfaces in between and that you can transfer the right information at the right time to the right systems. And uh, that helps you to have better quality, better data quality, and at the end, better data quality uh, goes into the data-driven optimization, which is the last point. And that means that you can, um, yeah, evaluate your data and check, okay, where do we have potentials to optimize our processes? And uh, usually it doesn't really make sense to dig into all the different details, but the top five is always the key. And this is the priority you should work on. So um, before we go into the content, I would like to know a little bit about your experience in terms of um, uh, augmented reality. And maybe you do not have any experience, but you have quite a good imagination about it. Maybe later on uh, we can uh, optimize that. So I would like to ask you to go to www.menti.com and use the code shown above. So it's 35111992. And I actually placed four questions here. And um, yeah, I would like to see um, what is your experience so far. Maybe you have nothing to say here but um, you have a feeling about that, which is also fine. And uh, this is the feeling we want to capture here. And later on, we can also uh, check um, if we can meet those um, requirements. So a lot of people are coming uh, into Mentimeter. Let's wait maybe one or two minutes. Um, yeah, maybe just one minute. I see 10, 11 uh, guys in the room here already. And you can also join a little bit later if you want to. Okay, now I see still some 
people joining. So we wait just a couple of more seconds and then we can start. Um, it looks like you know Mentimeter, so that's good. And um, now I would say we can start the questions. So um, it is just yeah, a question among the phases of value chain and support functions below. Where do you see augmented reality solution bringing the most value? So I said, okay, drug substance, drug product, product packaging, quality lab, maintenance, and other. So hopefully you selected ones. Um, here, I didn't say that any option is correct, um, but it's interesting that most of you guys are focusing on product packaging. Two said maintenance and three said drug product. So um, our focus is also product packaging and in some parts also drug products. Um, so far we have also uh, designed some use cases for maintenance. Quality was so far not part of it. It was just um, in the strategy process one big topic as well. But um, so far, there's no project uh, currently running within quality labs. So the next question should come up. Let's see. Now it's coming to the second question. So what applications do you see as the most promising for uh, augmented reality solutions. So we have remote support from supp suppliers as well as from organizations, within organizations, process guidance and for execution and process guidance for training knowledge transfer. So just select one. And um, okay, process guidance for training is interesting that most of you guys uh, select that. Some of you selected process guidance for execution. That is our main goal. Training is, um, I can show, show it later to you. Um, training is also part of the solution and also definitely possible within AR. Here is always the discussion between augmented reality and virtual reality. So training can also be done within virtual reality. And the big difference here for those who doesn't know the difference between augmented reality and virtual reality is that um, within augmented reality, you always see um, your surroundings. So you see the physical machine, you see the walls and everything else. And um, the glasses you, you use with augmented reality will project some additional elements from the computer into your view so that you have an interaction, a mixed reality between the physical world and um, the computer elements, basically. And that is um, um, yeah, the main difference between augmented reality and virtual reality, because within virtual reality, you don't see any reality. You cannot interact with the reality, uh, which is definitely not necessary for training, but uh, in some cases, it's also interesting to interact with the reality for training purposes. Okay, coming to the next question. So here, what is the biggest challenge you see about implementing and or scaling AR solutions? So is it integration with current infrastructure, regulatory hurdles, IT security, work and safety, or return on invest? Um, so let's see, what is uh, your opinion about that? Integration with current infrastructure, that's quite interesting because um, what we usually uh, discuss with our customers is that in the first step, you do not need any integration. For sure, you get a lot more benefits uh, once you integrate the product, but you, you can always do that in a step-by-step -step approach. Um, so augmented reality can be used 
in a standalone island more or less. And uh, once that is set up, you have your operators on board, everything knows how to work with it, then you can start integrating that. And for sure, um, the IT guys, the guys are always keen to get the data uh, out of the system. And um, this is also um, yeah, quite an easy task at the end. But here, as you already mentioned, the integration might be a challenge depending on your current infrastructure. But so far, um, we could we could always find a solution for something like that. Last but not least, uh, the fourth question is coming up. And um, what is the biggest success metric for implementation of augmented reality projects? So how do you say uh, this is a success? Embracing digital transformation, user adoption, productivity increase, cost savings, or quality improvements? Okay, that's interesting. So it's a bit of everything, more or less. Um, so definitely it's quality improvements. Um, digital transformation, so that would be more a strategic driver. Um, and productivity increase cost saving is uh, also a key point, I think. And anyways, it's uh, always with new technologies, you need to keep in mind that this is a transformation product project within your organization. And you, uh, you need to guide your uh, operators, your users for those systems. And um, if you look back 15 years ago, um, the first smartphones uh, came to the market. And at the beginning, it was maybe a little bit difficult to use those smartphones to learn the concept, how to use it. Today, we wouldn't even think uh, how to use a smartphone. It's just, we know it. <laughs> and um, I expect pretty much the same for augmented reality in the future as well. It will uh, sincerely take a couple of years, but um, that is something um, we, we definitely see and the uh, different typical use cases for augmented reality will also increase. So imagine, you have an augmented reality device at home, you can use it for cooking. Um, so I know a lot of people, uh, they don't love to cook, They it's just too complicated. So if you have an augmented, re uh, augmented reality device, you can just use it uh, and the device will uh, guide you step by step through the different steps. And that could be also a feasible approach and which is pretty much the same as we do within uh, a pharmaceutical production. It is also kind of a recipe, kind of a workflow, and we guide the operators through the different steps. Okay, thank you for sharing your um, opinions about augmented reality. Um, now coming back to the uh, presentation, so um, what I want to show you on the next slide is a little bit of system architecture, what you already have seen in the um, video I shared before. So um, we usually are in between with the augmented reality, uh, reality solution of the uh, machinery level and the uh, manufacturing execution level. And um, so right now we want to focus on the augmented reality part. One first step is usually the connectivity to the machines as well as to the MES. Um, as I mentioned before, for augmented reality, it's not necessary to have that in the first phase. Um, so it's definitely possible to connect to machines to connect to an MES level. Um, sometimes it makes sense to connect to the machines first. Sometimes it also makes sense to connect only to the MES system for augmented reality. If you wanna start workflows from the MES system, um, 
on the augmented reality device basically and then you can uh, push back the information what actually has the operator done with the within the workflow of the augmented reality device um, and send the information back to the NES level and um, we're gonna see that in a little bit more detail uh, later on but you can take pictures you can have multiple choices so depending on the current situation the operator will be guided through different process steps and that is quite a powerful and flexible system here so uh, what i uh, already mentioned is uh, the line execute is our solution here and our example how we use the guided workflows how we call it so we digitize usually the different sops of a shop floor um, basically we focus on the manual processes and um, we cover a lot of processes like the line clearance like the format change and those workflows are covered, let's say, machine related. So sometimes it's a surrounding, sometimes you wanna check some uh, different um, rooms or something like that during the line clearance. But uh, usually we focus on the machine related line clearance. And augmented reality is just one part. There's also another part we are currently um, investigating a little bit more, it's called automated line clearance, so that we combine the augmented reality part, which is this manual process with some uh, pictures from fixed cameras, um, and they can also detect objects uh, in specific areas. Okay, so um, going ahead and showing you a little bit more um, details here. Um, this is an, another slide I already mentioned that areas of interest for augmented reality. So where are we typically using augmented reality on the shop floor? Um, mainly you can imagine where we're very strong in inspection and packaging as well as serialization and end of line but we also have filling and pressing or mixing processes covered. Uh, and you can also imagine that you can go into the warehousing processes and um, help the operators in the warehouse as well. Now, as I promised before, uh, let's go into a second video. And just a second, I need to change um, the settings here again. So um, here in that video, I want to show you just a second. I need to switch the settings uh, for the sound because uh, we don't need the sound here. I want to explain some things here with uh, for you. It is um, a line clearance process, which is shown here actually on a physical, on a real machine. So. We record here basically the picture through the Microsoft HoloLens. So uh, it is exactly what you see um, through the uh, augmented reality glasses. And um, uh, maybe you're a little bit irritated about the um, pictures here, but it's much more calm if you look by yourself through the devices. So it's uh, it's only a technical reason why it's shaking a little bit. But uh, anyways, uh, it demonstrates you in a pretty good way um, that you get a better imagination how such devices work. And above here, you see, we call it a um, action group. So it's a complete workflow. So you, you can name it as you want. And um, now we start the workflow here and uh, yeah, go through the process. It's a sample process uh, to give you just a brief example about what elements are usually within such a workflow. And um, you can configure different types of instructions. So um, here it's just a simple instruction. You can read the text, which is uh, quite boring, 
but later on you're gonna see some further instructions with pictures videos you can also incorporate 3d objects and this is a specific action we call it a um, multiple choice action and a multiple choice action means uh, during the line clearance process you can decide is a specific area clean or not clean um, and then, then you select OK or not OK. And depending on the selection you do, um, you, you can yeah, set up the process in a different way. So if you say OK, then you um, trust your operator and say, OK, um, let's move on and um, keep going with the process. If it's not OK, you might uh, want to capture a picture through the HoloLens, uh, what is actually not okay to uh, have it in the documentation later on for further uh, evaluations. And here you also see some further instructions and um, we click on uh, not okay. Here you have seen that, um, that we took a snapshot because it's not okay, we said, okay, let's take a snapshot of that area that we have a documentation and later on another operator or um, a leader can decide what we need to do here. Um, you can also add further instructions that you say to the operator, please clean that area. And afterwards you can take another snapshot, for instance, um, with the cleaned area. So you have a proven track at the end uh, what was wrong, uh, the operator cleaned the, the area and afterwards you have a documentation that the area was really clean and another operator can also do a review just with the documentation. Uh, the second operator doesn't need to go to the shop floor, he can basically take the batch report with the different pictures, do a review um, with the different pictures and say, okay, I uh, checked the areas again. And uh, then you can also save time. So you do not need to go to the shop floor uh, a second time. And now we upload the picture in the background. So you don't see it here, um, but it's recorded at the end. And here you see, um, this is already the end um, for that process and the complete line clearance is finished. Now we uh, have a short look into a format change process. It's the same machine, it's an inspection machine again. And we start the process here and um, afterwards the, process, the workflow is loaded, the operator see the format change logs into the format change so a second operator can look what he's doing but uh, he cannot log into it again and here it's quite interesting there is a 3d object behind so um, if you have specific format parts you can also have uh, the format parts included in the system as a 3d object and that's basically um, what you can also do for training purposes. So you can set up your complete process. And um, if you wanna train the operators not on the shop floor, then you can also um, integrate a 3D object of the complete machine, which is always visible throughout the complete process. And the operator can basically do the complete process in, in the meeting room, basically and um, familiarize with the complete process, read all the instructions, see the videos and so forth, and um, work with the 3D objects. So here, um, the 3D objects are sometimes helpful if it's a quite complicated situation. And um, with that snapshot here, we document how we actually uh, mounted the format parts. So usually, first of all, you have to demount some format parts. Afterwards, you have to mount another format part. And with such a snapshot, you can document at the end um, what the operator has done. So first of all, um, one big advantage of such a system is that you don't lose any steps. So the system will always 
guide the operator, follow the different steps, and you don't forget any step in between, even if it's behind the machine, uh, even if it's during the night shift or something like that. And you can also decide whether you want to have a pretty good picture documentation or if it's not needed. So in critical cases, it might be helpful to have such a um, photo documentation. And that also helps you later on if there's a crash of the machine that you can double check, okay, what happens actually? And is there any format part maybe not correctly mounted? Okay, so the picture is uploaded and recorded in the batch report again. And um, here, this is a typical action with the mounting. And um, that is what we can see here in that video. I actually have another video for you. Um, and I want to show you that as well. It is um, actually um, a real process we set up. So that is not a showcase. And you see a setup process and a line clearance. And um, this video shows actually a setup process and a line clearance at a physical machine, at a real machine in a, a pharmaceutical production. And um, this is a coating machine, basically. So that has nothing to do with any uh, Kerber Pharma machine. So we set up the complete process for the um, coating machine here in the facility. And um, here um, you see the multiple choice again. So uh, we select the different options. And um, here, sometimes you need to enter some or mount some specific format parts. And in that case, it is very difficult to see that on a picture, basically. So the operator is forced to enter a specific size he actually mounts. And um, you can also see that you can integrate any picture here. So it's um, also possible to, to see on the pictures where you have to do something and uh, the instruction says uh, exactly where you have to do something. Again, here you have to mount a specific format part. So you see uh, we're talking about very tiny, tiny format parts. And uh, that's why the operator has to select um, if we uh, want to use a uh, yeah, 1.2 millimeter um, or a one millimeter format part. And it's always possible, if you have seen it um, with the photo, it's always possible for the operator to uh, go uh, closer to the machine, closer to the elements. But you can also say, okay, please follow me. So if you need to walk away, or if you need to uh, read some detailed information, it's always possible to do that. So um, even if the quality of the video might not be uh, the best one, it is clearly visible in the HoloLens later on. Here we took a snapshot uh, to check the different houses. And um, again, we see a multiple choice. So the operator has to check um, the different sizes of the houses. And um, for the leakage test, now we um, yeah, need to uh, say, OK, is it successful, successful or not? And um, uh, depending on the situation, we need to check some or do some further checks if the leakage test is not successful. So, um, now it's a specific area for that specific machine. So uh, we, you see an isolator in front of the coating machine. And uh, for the isolator, it is, um, yeah, it is necessary to say if that is in use or not. Sometimes it's in use, sometimes not. And now we need to check um, some further um, elements here. And here we integrated actually the red arrow 
which means um, it is a fixed arrow in the room. So every time you want to guide the operator in the room to the right position, um, it is not only done with the different actions, it is also done uh, or can also be done with 3D objects. So you can use lines, arrows, whatever you want, add that to specific actions and um, during the setup process of the system, you place those objects in the room and um, those objects guide the operator to the right position where he has to do something or where, ha where he has to place something. And that is quite interesting, especially for a new operator, since um, you can decide uh, yeah, or the operator is guided to the right positions in the room. And that is actually one of the biggest benefits of augmented reality against a, a simple workflow system, which can be used on a tablet. Um, however, our system is able to do both. So you can always run those processes on a tablet basis. So it's a simple list. You see all the different help files as well. Um, you can also use um, the, um, the tablet process on an augmented reality basis, but then you have to hold the tablet, for instance, in the room, which is not really comfortable and it's not hand, hands-free. And that is one of the big advantages for, um, uh, for the HoloLens actually, because um, it is really hands-free and that gives you the possibility to work at the machine, to change format parts and um, this gives you a lot of flexibility and the visor of the hololens 2 actually can also be um, uh, moved away so if you have the need to look at specific locations in a very detailed way then it's also possible and you can move up the visor and later on if you uh, continue with the process you move down the visor and everything is fine. Okay, now I showed you um, a lot of examples and different possibilities for augmented reality, how we set up processes. So it's, it's now up to your imagination to think about your processes. So every time you have a manual process which cannot really be automated, then you can use such a system to um, yeah, first of all document and design the different processes in such a system. Afterwards, the operator uh, is guided through the complete workflow and you have more or less an automated documentation in the background. So uh, now let's have a look on different other um, references here. I want to talk about some references, which is one is uh, Pfizer in Australia. Um, they use uh, such a system on a tablet basis, basically. So they, they decided they want to cover a lot of small different service processes on the shop floor. If you have to do a calibration, if you have to do um, some small inspections and so forth because they wanted to document everything in one system and um, nevertheless um, you, you can design the different workflows in such a system and use it on a tablet as well as in the hololens at the end for the hololens for sure you need to do some more steps in terms of the setup because the actions needs to be uh, need to be uh, placed in the room to the right locations, but this is just the one one time task. So at the beginning of the processes of the um, yeah uh, start of such a project, you need to design the process first. Afterwards, um, you need to place the elements in the room, and um, once that is done and the complete workflow is approved, then you can use the workflow um, on the shop floor with the different devices. So um, another example is a format change with Novartis um, on a packaging line. 
Um, that is pretty much what we already have seen um, in the first video as an introduction. So you have a big packaging line and you guide the operator through the format change. And this is done for a complete line basically. So it, we have something like six different machine suppliers uh, in it in a row and we cover all the different formats uh, format change processes for the different machine suppliers in some cases it might be a little bit more complicated because you have to do a lot more in other cases if you have a simple machine then uh, you only have to do two three five uh, actions um, and then the format change is done Another interesting example I showed you in the video before is Novartis uh, with the line clearance and setup process for a coating machine, including an isolator. So that's what I explained before. And uh, another big example is line clearance for um, a Schubert machine, um, which is a complete line with something like um, 10 different aggregates. It's a huge facility or a huge line actually um, with about 100 meters long. So um, here the line clearance process is supported um, within um, the facility and the operator is guided through the complete um, line clearance process and you have the automated documentation in the background. So what are generally the benefits for um, such a system? I already talked about that. Um, one thing is definitely maximizing the quality of, of the execution of the processes. So um, you make sure that the operator doesn't um, yeah, forget anything um, in terms of the yeah, approved SOP, approved digitized SOP. And even if you have a shift uh, and a, a shift changeover and a handshake uh, between different shifts, um, then the first operator can just log out. Um, then the second uh, operator can log into uh, to the process, to the system. And the second operator will directly see, okay, 65% of the process are already done. And he directly uh, sees the steps which needs to be done and he can start uh, right away at the right position without losing any information or without mixing up anything um, uh, within the workflow. A quick ramp up is um, basically the training on the system. So you can use the system for training purposes. On the other hand, um, the operator is guided through the complete process. So typically we talk to customers um, and they told us that new operators are trained first and then they do the processes together with an expert for the next six to 12 months. And um, such a system helps you to be able to, um, yeah, to, to ramp up new employees. And even if a new employee has a problem, then you have the possibility to call someone and um, basically use the same device as a remote support device. That is basically also another big uh, opportunity and big advantage for augmented reality. Why we love augmented reality and um, that is why we definitely go forward in that direction. Okay, so in terms of realizing a pilot, what does it mean to such a system? So what, what do we need to do? I um, already mentioned that we need to identify the use case first. Um, after we identify the use case and um, configure the workflows, we can do a test installation. Usually we need to collect a lot of help files to um, give some more um, flesh to the bones so that you have a lot of pictures um, and videos which help the operator to to be able to run the complete process without any help ideally and um, you can also attach different 3d objects uh, which is sometimes as i said in the format change especially interesting 
Um, 3D objects are uh, interesting in the line clearance process as we call it a footnote. Footnote means that you can uh, uh, yeah, place uh, individually the different 3D objects in the room as you could see before with the red arrow. And after that, you can start basically uh, testing in the pilot phase um, without any further integration um, for the first step. And once the evaluation is done, it's, it's a successful project, then you can also roll out the system to other lines, to other facilities. And um, we can also discuss the integration to um, further uh, systems. So if you want to exchange the information to an MES system, then we wouldn't create a batch report in our system here. We would transfer the information to any MES system and then you can do the batch reporting over there. And in some cases, especially for the format change, um, it is necessary to get um, information from the machine. So for instance, if you have a hand wheel, and you want to see the current values, then you can visualize the target value as well as uh, the current value. And um, then uh, the operator directly knows uh, when, when he's done with the task. In terms of the system setup, here's a simple picture um, about the system architecture. So usually we run uh, our system uh, on a computer, you do not need a full-blown server here. You can have a virtual machine, you can have a simple notebook. There are no uh, specific requirements. And um, we need to have a Wi-Fi router somewhere and both are linked to your production network or you can have a standalone network as well. It, really depends on the customer. Sometimes uh, we integrate it into the production network. Uh, in other times, it's a standalone network and the Wi-Fi router is needed to have the communication between the server system and the Microsoft HoloLens, basically. And um, yeah, depending on where your other systems are, like the MES system, then we can all easily connect the um, server the augmented reality server to the, through usually a firewall to the company network, and then you can exchange um, information to the MES system. I already talked a little bit about um, the workflows and the design of the different workflows. And here that gives you a brief overview about um, yeah, how we do that. And first of all, um, we need to create a digital twin, which means um, you have different, you have a site, you have an area, a process cell, and so forth. And um, then we create, um, yeah, the different machines, units, and equipment modules. And attached to that, we also create the different workflows. And um, with such a system, you it's based on UML. It's an activity UML diagram, basically. Um, a little bit simplified. And um, once you have all the information um, covered in that system, you do an export and uh, this export generates a file which can be directly used within, within the execution engine. And afterwards you can basically set up your system, which means you need to uh, place the elements within the HoloLens at the right position. And once that is done and saved, then you can also um, yeah, run the process and create a batch and record all the different steps of the operator. Um, yeah, that is um, basically how you design the system. So it's not very complicated. It's just a matter of um, the thinking of the SOPs is a little bit different because in the past you, you just define some steps and now you need to think about um, if you wanna have a multiple choice here, if you wanna take a snapshot um, and that is an iterative process typically that um, 
you um, yeah you constantly improve your workflows here and if you figure out okay there's a, tr a critical area we need another video or something like that to help the operator then you can easily do that and attach that to the different actions in the execution engine so you do not need to change the process here but on the other hand if you decide okay we want to have another snapshot then you just add another action um, somewhere maybe here and then um, you can say okay here's an, an additional action you approve the complete process again and then you can use it and um, yeah you can also copy and paste the different workflows to other equipments once uh, you say okay we have multiple times pretty much the same equipment the um, yeah, the equipment and the process is pretty similar. Then you just copy and paste uh, the different workflows and then you can take it from there and update whatever is needed. So now I'm coming uh, to the end of my presentation. And um, as you already mentioned before, um, if you have any further questions, um, we're happy to discuss that. I think we still have enough time to do that. And um, yeah, um, I think that is the time um, to say thank you to you to listen. And um, yeah, please, I think Uday, um, we should use the chat functionality to um, enter further questions, right? Yeah, uh, no, they can they can type their questions by in the questions tab. So all the delegates have a question tab, then please type in your questions in the questions tab, and then Frederick will take those questions. So let me read here, first question. Uh, what type of contingency and disaster recovery planning exist in the event of any cybersecurity issues? Is there any frequency to ensure regular checks that the recovery planning will function properly in emergency? In one of the videos shown, a 3D part was taken by the engineer. Uh, is this using another technology along with AR like digital twins? So there are three or four questions on this. Okay. Um... I'm not sure if I'm able to see the questions right now. I do not see the questions, but... No, I can. If, if I make you the organizer, you will be able to see the questions. You want me to do okay. that? Okay, I'll make you the organizer. <laughs> okay. So you can see the questions tab now. Um. So the first question was about disaster recovery and contingency, as far as I can remember. Yes. And um, so uh, actually, it is ba all the information is stored on the server. So um, once you have a disaster recovery plan for your server, um, you're fine. So if it's a virtual machine, for instance, Usually you have your own mechanism and we can always link to your internal procedures. And um, otherwise we also have some procedures um, and we show you what needs to be stored and um, how you can recover that. But in general, most customers just have their own procedures and that's usually not a problem. And since we're uh, in usually in the production network, um, um, the system is usually protected against any um, yeah, other connection within the office network or the internet. Okay. Um, I let me check here. Ah, now it's getting better. Um, so you're able to see the questions, Dr. Frederick? Yeah, I, I'm able okay. to see the questions right now. Then, then so, you can read it yourself. Yeah, exactly. 
Um, so the first question I, we, I think we already skipped here is um, if the second video with the coding machine uh, also uses the HoloLens. Yes, um, that was actually a picture or a video through the HoloLens um, as shown before in, in the first part with the inspection machine. So that was exactly what an operator would see through the HoloLens and you see the different elements. And as I mentioned before at the beginning, if you do not have the experience um, to look through a HoloLens, it looks a little bit weird because it's quite shaky in the video. But um, for the operator itself, it's like looking through your standard glasses and you see um, yeah, in a very fixed way the different elements. Because just imagine you have the um, glasses on your head and um, even if your head is shaking a little bit, um, that, will, that will be uh, taken in the video. But um, you usually do not see um, all the head shaking. Uh, for you, the picture of the reality is always very calm. Okay, I think, um, okay, um, the second question with the disaster recovery is quite long. So I check if there's anything else we need to um, answer here. Um, Yeah, there's the 3D part uh, question. Um, the 3D part was taken by the engineer. Is this using another technology along with AR like digital twins? No, actually um, the 3D parts has nothing to do with the digital twins. Um, the 3D parts are a specific file format and you can attach that to actions or you can use it as so-called footnotes. So um, uh, if you attach that to an action, then um, usually you have to mount a specific format part, for instance. And then it's interesting for the operator to see that specific format part and uh, you can create a 3D clone, grab it, uh, shrink it, resize it, uh, move it in the room, whatever you want. And you can do that as an operator within the system. And if you have foot footnote, the difference is it's also the same file type, um, but then it's um, fixed in the room. So the operator is usually not able to move those 3D parts because we wanna show something. We wanna guide the operator with those 3D parts, or you have a complete machine as a 3D object for training purposes. Um, in the HoloLens and then the operator shouldn't move the complete machine because um, then the machine and the different actions are not linked anymore. And um, those are um, yeah, different meanings of 3D objects, but it's the same type and it's always the same system. So um, um, there's no other system around. Okay, the next question I see here, uh, can we get the presentation for our future reference? I think uh, Uday, it's also, it's already planned to share um, the recording of the session. And um, so that yes. will be managed afterwards. Um, yeah, okay, the next question is also about the recording. Is there any guideline applicable for validation of the system? Okay, um, validation is a good point here because um, uh, that is uh, latest with the line clearance, we are always facing um, this issue and we need to discuss um, the, the, yeah, the complete process, the workflows with the quality department. And what we usually do is we design the complete processes within our designing system. Um, we afterwards transfer that to the execution engine and within the execution engine, you uh, run the processes um, yeah, with basically two HoloLenses. And um, yeah, there are guidelines applicable for validation of such systems. And um, afterwards, both 
um, yeah, operators or sometimes it's one quality guy and one engineering guy running the process. So um, it is uh, also possible to use two HoloLenses and one guy is actually executing the workflows and the other guy can uh, see what he's doing. And um, by doing this, um, you, you cover or you check the complete process again and afterwards you can do the approval in the system and uh, only then you can use um, the workflows in a productive environment. Um, do you offer such validation for your clients? Yes, for sure. Um, so that is also part um, of the complete, uh, let's say, consulting here around the augmented reality. So we, uh, it's up to the customer to decide what he wants to do. Um, we can run the complete process from designing the uh, workflows, setting up the system, um, and uh, training the operators, validation of the system, uh, creating all the different documents. And um, latest after the first project, the customer needs to decide um, whether he wants to do some steps uh, by themselves or if they, um, if they wanna ask us to do that. Um, validation is one point, um, but also the design of the workflows um, can be done by the customer at the end. How compatible this technology is for great beer areas? That's an interesting question. So this year, Microsoft actually launched the Microsoft HoloLens 2 in an industrial edition. And um, actually, to my knowledge, it is certified by Microsoft for great beer areas. But I also know that um, some deeper investigations um, are a little bit difficult. So um, here we hope, so we are using the Microsoft HoloLens 2 uh, as an augmented reality device since this is the currently still the best device on the market uh, to use augmented reality. And um, for grade B areas, we need to check some details. Um, sometimes it's possible, sometimes it might be difficult. Um, but that is definitely um, something Microsoft still has to work on. Um, are there any ISO standards that guide in disaster recovery planning? I think uh, it is again about disaster recovery. Um, and so here, as a if it, Frederick, if you could read the full question so that other participants will know what the question is. Okay, sure, no problem. Are there any ISO standards that guide in contingency and disaster recovery planning to suit pharmaceutical industry? And as I mentioned before, we usually link um, the systems to the plans, to the disaster recovery plans, which are already existing in the pharmaceutical companies. And um, we do not need to invent the wheel here again. Um, so I do not see it a problem here. Um, okay. Oh, no. I skipped some questions. Um, how much time will this take to implement typically for tablet manufacturing line? Um, so uh, for us, it doesn't really matter if we design the system for the HoloLens with augmented reality or with the tablet. Um, usually it takes, if we just take one machine with one use case, one process like the line clearance, and roughly I would say uh, we have something like 50, 60 steps, um, then it takes about four to six weeks to set the complete system up. So first of all, we need to do the workshops for the definition of the workflows. And afterwards, we um, we need to uh, install the system uh, on site and uh, do the training. And um, then we are ready to use the system. And usually we have a couple of cycles 
until we have all the help files generated like pictures, videos. In some cases, this is already available. In other cases, you need to take that and uh, uh, then we can incorporate that to the different steps. There's a second question in, in there. Um, what sort of additional infrastructure is required to implement this? So um, actually assuming that you already have a data center with, uh, with an empty server, an empty virtual machine, and you already have a Wi-Fi network in your production, then the main equipment you still need is the Microsoft HoloLens 2, so the augmented reality device. And um, nothing else is necessary to, to run such a system. Even if you integrate that later to other systems, then we're talking about um, interfaces and this is purely software uh, done on the server where the system is located. Can the complete batch record execution be done in this solution irrespective of MES solution and the review process is also done in the similar manner? So actually what we do here is uh, we capture all the information done with, um, yeah, within the different workflows. And um, now it's always the question, we can uh, generate a PDF report out of it and then you can do a review process of the PDF report. That's one way or we can um, transfer the information together with the pictures and so forth to an MES system. And then you can uh, use that information to be incorporated into an MES batch report. And then you have your standard batch report review within the MES system, both is possible. And if you, have a, if you set it up as a standalone system, then you, um, uh, you usually follow the first um, step, but if you have an MES system, then usually you want to link, uh, link the system to the MES system. And the MES system can also trigger workflows. Um, so you can also send a signal from the MES system down to the augmented reality system. And um, then you can trigger the work a specific workflow. So saying um, start, please start workflow line clearance at machine one. And then um, this workflow started um, can be executed by the operator. And after the operator has finished the complete workflow, um, the information of the execution will go back to the MES system and you can incorporate the information in there. Is there any Android app for Line Execute so that we can use smartphone instead of HoloLens? Um, currently, um, you can run the uh, yeah, workflows in a browser. And um, basically you can do it on a smartphone as well, but um, I'm, I doubt that is quite convenient. So usually uh, we use a tablet instead. Um, but you can use um, an Android smartphone or an Android tablet to run the, the workflows in a browser. But as I mentioned before, then you lose the augmented reality feature. So um, uh, you have a list, you have all the details, all the text information. You also can see the uh, pictures and videos. You can even see the 3D objects on a tablet but um, they are not linked to the room, basically. So um, you, you always have the information at hand on the tablet for sure, but um, the tablet cannot really say to you where exactly in the room you have to do that. That's only possible with augmented reality. Okay, thank you for, for the flowers here. Thank you for the wonderful presentation. I would like to ask um, a basic question as to how the operator selects an answer to a question or selects a specific option as I don't have an experience on using HoloLens. Okay, 
Yeah, I didn't mention that in the presentation, but um, using the HoloLens uh, can be done in two different ways. One way is uh, the so-called hand gesture. So um, if you look uh, at my fingers, you just do something like this and um, you point on specific points um, with your eyes basically, and then uh, you can click on the different elements. If an element is quite close to you, you in, in the view, then you can also use a so-called air tap. It's like playing piano in, in the air. So um, you can use something like that. And um, what you can also do is you can use the um, speech control of the HoloLens. So instead of clicking on, uh, on a specific icon, you can also say, take photo. And then the HoloLens will capture a picture uh, for a snapshot action, for instance. And um, here it's really, really interesting and great uh, how those devices uh, work because um, they have an iris scan. And if you look on a specific element and if you say select, um, then the HoloLens will directly select those elements. Um, you have to train it a little bit because it's. At the beginning, it's quite weird because you really have to focus on the element, say select, and then automatically this element is selected. Um, but this, this is something really powerful. And uh, since the Microsoft HoloLens 2, it is also possible to use the speech control in very loud surroundings. So if you have a package in mind, you can imagine it could be a little bit louder. And um, uh, the speech uh, recognition and the microphones of the HoloLens are really great so that um, even if a second operator is next to you, the HoloLens will recognize if you are saying a command or if the uh, colleague next to you is saying a command. So um, I can just encourage you to uh, to <laughs> to check if you if you are able to get a hololens 2 somewhere and to play around a, uh, with it a little bit it's it's a really great device and you can do a lot with it um, what is the cost per line equipment and return on investment so um, here it it really depends on the different situations it's not easily um, uh, yeah figured out because um, for the line, it really depends on the amount of actions. And um, the HoloLens 2 actually is about 4,000 euro. Um, that is basically the device. And depending on the amount of actions, um, we, we need to calculate the effort. So usually for a simple process, we calculate something like, um, 15 to 20 days with uh, something like 30 actions. And um, that doesn't mean uh, that you need 40 days for 60 actions. That's not the case, but um, uh, roughly to give you an understanding about that. And the return on invest uh, really depends on, on the specifica of the packaging line or of the manufacturing line, because if you, have a lot of change over processes, a lot of line clearance processes, and you can reduce the time. Uh, so um, a colleague did an investigate investigation with different pharmaceutical companies. So in average, um, uh, you have something like four hours um, per day used for line clearance processes. That is not for all the different line clearance, uh, for all the different uh, manufacturing lines, but in, in average, it's four hours. And just imagine you can reduce that from four hours to three hours or even a little bit more um, due to the fact that you do not have to have, uh, have to do that many line clearances or the second line clearance review is uh, much simpler because um, the operator can do that in the office without um, going to the shop floor. Um, and that's a huge yeah, um, possibility to get a payback for such systems. 
but uh, we need to investigate that on an individual basis usually. Um, and uh, yeah, one of the next questions is also how could one calculate the ROI on the investment in AR? Um, I mentioned the uh, reduction of the uh, time, but also we need to keep in mind that in some cases or in, in a lot of cases, you can also reduce the amount of deviations. So if there is no, um, yeah, no possibility to forget a step, and if you increase with that uh, the deviation that you have a crash of a machine after a couple of minutes uh, during startup phase or something like that, that gives you also a big advantage because um, uh, every deviation needs a lot of time. And um, I'm not talking about losing money because um, some products are uh, scrapped afterwards. Um, and here, uh, yeah, it's it's a big advantage as well. And you also need to keep in mind, depending on your operator structure, if you have a lot of new operators and need to ramp up a lot of uh, operators constantly, um, then it could also benefit you um, that you do not need a lot of trainers, that an operator is um, up to speed in a much faster time. And um, this can be, um, yeah, can be calculated in the ROI calculation as well. Um, the next question is, uh, can the AR system also verify any particular action, whether it is being done correctly or not, and hence stop further steps if one is not doing a given step correctly? So. Um, actually, currently the system is designed in a way that once the operator conf uh, confirms the action, then the system assume, assumes that the operator has done the complete action. Basically, the second step, the second click on an action is the confirmation of the operator uh, that he did the step correctly. And this is also recorded in the system. So you have the timestamp, you have the, the username and the action itself uh, showing, okay, at that time, the user has done um, that specific action. In some cases, if you have a machine connectivity and if you have a target value for, let's say a hand wheel, um, and uh, you also get the, um, current value of the hand wheel, then you can make a comparison between the target value and the hand wheel value and stop the operator once uh, it is not reached in the right range. But um, for that, you need a little bit more information. And for that, you also us usually need the integration with the machines. Otherwise, uh, you do not have enough information to have a check um, to do that. Okay, I think we already covered um, the next couple of questions, more or less. Uh, any, any examples of use of augmented reality to de-skill any given skill job, like let's say change over of a packaging line. Yeah, um, uh, actually when we talked to a customer, he told us at, uh, for, for the formal change, he has pretty much any skill level of the operators um, from an engineer down to a hair cutter. Uh, and um, basically, for sure, the hair cutter needs to be a little bit more trained in such a system and uh, all the different processes. But anyways, as I mentioned before, it is not necessary to be certified on a specific machine. It is more necessary to learn the technology. And once uh, you know how to use it, then um, it is up to you to um, check, okay, what kind of information is necessary? Um, how many pictures, videos um, do we need to guide the operator in an optimal way? So um, this is a task 
after we set up the process, usually an optimization task to check, okay, um, do we still have any errors and uh, why or how can we reduce the amount of errors here um, to better help the operators uh, for such a system? Um, next question is about other devices. Um, as I mentioned before, uh, there are other augmented reality devices for sure on the market. But uh, for really augmented reality, the HoloLens is um, currently the only one um, you should choose. There are some other devices which are used more like a tablet on a head, so you can control them uh, via voice control, for instance. Um, but then you do not have real augmented reality. Um, it is more that you see a screen in, uh, yeah, in your view, and that um, that you can basically show the different steps in a browser, like on a tablet, and um, this is not that powerful like the Hololens. So for real augmented reality, I would always recommend the Hololens. If you want to use augmented reality, like on on an iPad or something like that, that is also possible, but um, here again, then you have to hold the um, tablet in the room and it's not that easy and you do not have your hands um, to work on the machine there. Um, what about AR application compliance to the 21 CFR guidelines uh, for a software and pharma industry? So actually, um, the validation is a big part for us here. And um, the system behind the Lion Suite itself is 21 CFR Part 11 compliant. And uh, therefore, we do not have any problems here. It is more uh, to check how can you qualify an augmented reality device like the Microsoft HoloLens 2. But um, here we already did the first projects uh, doing that and um, this is usually also not a problem because at the end we're talking about information we are talking about data um, which is currently used in other scenarios as well so um, we're talking about maybe more detailed data but you already might have an mes system in place so um, uh, if you talk to your quality department, if you talk to the regu regulatory body, then you can always say, okay, there are a lot of MES systems in the market. Why uh, can you, cannot we use uh, such an augmented reality system as well? Because it's handling pretty much the same data. And in terms of the device itself, it's just a device to show the information. So the information itself is stored on the server and uh, the Microsoft HoloLens doesn't store anything. It's just showing the information. Uh, what are the real-time challenges for compliance of or validation of this system? The real-time challenge, uh, okay, I understood the question first in, in the way, um, if the system is fast enough, then I would have said yes. Um, for compliance and validation, um, it's it's maybe you can place the question in a little bit different way um, because I do not see any real-time challenges for compliance or validation. Um, and um, if you if you want to use that in a quality lab, for instance, then definitely um, the workflows we showed you, um, just imagine you you can design any workflow. You can set up the different text and therefore um, any step, any manual step you want to record in a QC lab can also be covered with uh, such a system. Can AR assistance be used for fine settings on a machine? Um, yeah, uh, you can always use the remote assistance functionality of such a device um, for any purposes. So if the machine crashes, if you have a problem, if there is a service technician, but uh, there is a specific problem 
and he needs to have a system specialist somewhere, then uh, you can use the devices to uh, transfer basically the picture um, from the operator to the screen of the service technician. And uh, the service technician is also able to um, draw anything into the picture. So the uh, operator or the technician in front of the machine um, sees, sees something and the service technician, which is connected remotely, can uh, draw a circle around through around different buttons, for instance, and then say, okay, please press that button and the operator directly knows which button to press. Um, so that is always possible. Here, it's um, just a question to check what is the network environment and who can use that and who can do that. Um, that really depends on um, yeah, on the system architecture here. Um, okay, there is one more question, I think. Uh, this is more about an operator being able to do fine settings. Um, that is further to the queue on fine settings. Okay, so if the operator needs a second person to get help for fine settings, then it's pretty much the same scenario for me uh, between an operator and the service technician or an engineer. Um, the yeah, the problem or you need to make sure that the service technician is able to see the right things in the screen. Um, so if it's too tiny, it could be a little bit difficult, but um, in most cases, it's definitely possible. So I think okay. that was the last question. Yes, as far as I can see, and uh, we're good in time, so. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much, Frederick, for an excellent presentation and answering all these questions. Thank you, delegates, for joining today. And before we close, I will hand it over to you, Frederick, again for your concluding remarks. Yeah, thank you for the audience. Um, and thank you very much to listen to me. And we had quite a lot of good questions here. So if you have any further questions uh, i'm happy if you reach out to me and we can further discuss that later on okay have a good day good afternoon yeah thank you delegates for joining today have a good day have a good evening stay safe and follow all the regulations and rules of your local government and local municipal corporation good evening and bye-bye bye frederick thank you thank you